Um, one of the things that I think is vastly underused in creating ebooks from InDesign is object styles. So let's open up the object styles palette. We can access that from styles, object styles. And of course it went on the other window. Let's bring that over here and put that right there. So object styles are sort of, um, you know, this is a, it's like a bit of a secret trick um, and it's really, really handy. So let's talk a little bit about them. However you treat your images and your content, be sure to use object styles to style them. Using object styles means that you can map to more semantic HTML options, and then you can control how those similar elements behave in a book. So for example, this image here, um, let me increase the size of this a bit so you can see it. It has a three key lines on it, um, and I want to preserve that in the ebook for reasons, so let's just say. Um, so I'm going to create a new object style for it that um, will accommodate that. I'm going to call it something like, so I'm, just in case you missed what I saw that did there, there's the object styles palette, there's the flyout menu in almost the top right corner. It's one step down and I'm going to create a new object style. So new object style and I'll call it uh, key lines, let's just say. Um, I'm not actually going to do much in this window. There's a lot of things you could do here, but I, I prefer to do them somewhere else. So just the, the simple fact of creating a new object style for this um, style will mean that it's easier to deal with later. So I created this new object style, now I'm going to apply it, and that little plus sign went away when I applied it. Under here, you'll see that I have, um, let's just... I have a fig caption style that I'm going to, that this the caption is styled as. Um, in other spaces, the sidebar on this page, which has disappeared, is styled with a sidebar object style. Um, and that's to control how things come out in the ebook. We'll get into that when I talk about editing all export tags. But using object styles is a great way to control how things come out and to make sure that every single image that's like a chapter facing opening image in this book will have those three key lines on it because I'm using object styles. <clears throat> and the next thing to tell you about here, so let's leave object styles alone for a minute. I'm going to move that to the side. You can apply image descriptions directly from InDesign. So let's have a look at what that looks like. It's back up under Object, Object Export Options. So here, this window here is where a lot of EPUB goodness happens. So you saw that this is where we can apply um, EPUB type semantics. I'm going to skip over the PDF part because PDF is a swear word. Uh, don't tell Adobe I said that. And I'm gonna go to the alt text window. Under alt text, there's a number of options here. There is, um, there is some move, there's some uh, chains being rattled in the industry to embed alt text in the metadata of an image. Um, to this point in time, I have never actually seen that, so I pretty much always use the custom tag. And then here is where you can input your alt text. So <clears throat> it's a good idea to preserve your alt text in the InDesign file because then that InDesign file can be your archive forevermore and the alt text will travel with it. So um, you uh, you know this is a good place to put it and to store it. You can also just put it in the EPUB but then if you have to um, add a new chapter or update the file because a whole bunch of corrections just came in from the author or something similar, then that alt text is preserved in the InDesign file. When you re-export that content, it is saved. There's a lot of good reasons to do that. Um, then the other thing I want to, to tell you about um, images is to consider using the pasteboard. The pasteboard is there for you to use. So let's Let's um, scroll down to chapter two and I'll show you what I did when it came to the pasteboard. So here's this image. I'm going to format it with the object called key lines. I'm gonna make sure that the, f the frame that the caption in is styled as a fig caption. And then over here on the pasteboard, you'll see this, this uh, frame that I have sitting there. This isn't going to come out in the ebook because it's on the pasteboard. So it's, it's in the sort of negative space it will not impact anything that's happening live on the page. And in here, I've pasted a URL. This is where I got this image from. It's from Wikipedia. 
and I've pasted the URL there. Now, why on earth would I do that? And that's because this URL, as I'm typesetting and creating this content, this URL may come in handy later on because I, I may be able to go there and get really good alt text to use later. Um, I work on a lot of children's picture book contents and I use the pasteboard to store things like the instructions to illustrators because those instructions to the illustrator is the basis of the image description later on. So describing to you how to write image descriptions is a little bit out of scope for this video, but use the pasteboard, uh, leverage the pasteboard for your image description purposes is basically what I'm telling you. I don't see a lot of people doing this and I think it's um, a quick, easy way to sort of keep notes to yourself for future reference um, and comes in handy for me all the time. So that's um, me giving you my a little simple tip and trick to use in your everyday workflows.